Hey, do you guys notice anything different about me? Like uh, anything at all? Just think about it for a second. That's right. I haven't been able to cut my hair because we're in a lockdown again. It is New Year's Eve, you guys, and here at the Educated Bar Fly, I've been racking my brains trying to figure out what the heck I was going to say in this intro to you guys to, you know, kind of sum up this trash can fire of year. But you know what? It's New Year's Eve. I just want to keep this kind of shorter than I usually do. I don't want to go on a big tangent. I don't really know what to say. I just kind of feel like this whole year has been incredibly challenging for all of us for different reasons. And I just hope that we can set the new year on fire. So I'm actually going to start with a cocktail called set the new year on fire. Let's get into it. So first thing we are going to do is get some mint from our little mint cup here. I don't know why I'm doing this in the big tin. I should probably just do it in the small tin and put, I don't know, six to eight leaves, whatever, reserving the uh, sprig. I'm actually going to use a couple of different sprigs for this drink. It's enough. Uh, then we're going to do, I forgot. I forgot that I don't do pre-juiced lime anymore, Maris. Um, we're going to do a little three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And then we're going to take this little lime boat that we squeezed and we're going we're gonna to save it. Three quarters of an ounce of lime, and then we're gonna do half an ounce of simple syrup. We're gonna take a muddler and we're just gonna give it a light, light press to release those lime oils. And then, usually I'm good about pre-opening these, but I did not pre-open this today. Two ounces of our Bowmore scotch, which is the Isla scotch. And Bowmore is gonna be like nice and peaty. It's gonna have a little bit of those fruit flavors as well though. Okay, then we're gonna add just like a little Scotia pebble and give it a nice whip. And you can feel free to whip shake this until all the ice is gone. Give it a nice little bit of dilution. Fill it down a little bit. And then we're just gonna dump it into our glass. And we're gonna fill this with pebble. And then we're gonna do a little half ounce Campari float. And then, let me give it a little crushy pants and a slappy poo. And uh, it wouldn't be called uh, set the new year on fire if we weren't lighting stuff on fire. So I'm going to put this lime boat here. And uh, recipe calls for uh, Bacardi 151. But today I only have the lemon heart. So we're using that, which I think is going to be good anyway. And take a little Demerara sugar cube. Just going to pour a little one fifty one float. All right, and then we light it on fire. And of course, it's a alcohol flame that we can't really see. So we're going to take some uh, cinnamon and just. And there we go. We're lighting the new year on fire. All right, let's give it a taste. Remember to extinguish it before you drink. Oh, that's fantastic. So what I love about this cocktail is that it is a riff on one of my absolute favorites, the Queen Spark Swizzle, but subbing uh, Isla Scotch for the rum. So you have these nice sort of kind of smoke and peat notes that go really, really well with the Campari. And then of course you have that nice lime sour and then you have the, the mint, the botanicalness of the mint just kind of bringing up the back end. So there it is. Set the New Year on Fire by Yale Vengroff, who's an LA-based bartender who runs the program at the Spare Room at the Roosevelt Hotel. Uh, she also runs a program at Genghis Cone and a few other pretty amazing LA spots. She's very well known uh, and you should definitely check her out. She is at ASAP Stormborn on Instagram and definitely check this cocktail out. Let's move on to the next one. 
Next cocktail up is called a Sidecar 75. I would tell you what the genesis of this cocktail was, but I think the name kind of speaks for itself. We know what the inspiration was. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. And then we're just gonna do half an ounce of champagne syrup, which is pretty easy to make. You just three parts champagne to two parts sugar. Then we're gonna do half an ounce of dry curacao and two and a half ounces of cognac. We're gonna be using the Hein today. Put some ice into our big tin. Mary, our cocktail, let me give it a shake. Fine strain. And then for a garnish, just a little lemon twist. You can actually use a prickly pear if you can find one, but I could not find one before I made the cocktail. So no prickly pear garnish here, but you can use a little slice of prickly pear. Fantastic. Now, a lot of the reason why I picked this cocktail was because I mean, A, it just looked fantastic, but also because it uses champagne in a very inventive way. You know, I didn't want to do, like everybody on the YouTube is probably going to do a lot of champagne cocktails for New Year's Eve. It's kind of the cliche thing to do. Obviously, I wanted to put champagne into this video somehow because it is sort of the iconic and accepted thing to drink during New Year's, but I, I wanted to find something inventive. Uh, this cocktail was created by a guy named Jonas, or is it? Jonas, right? Jona. Jonas Anderson. He's from a bar called Strom in Denmark. I'm assuming it would be Jonas, right? Jonas Anderson in, in Denmark? There you go. Okay. What Marius said. Um, and it, it, yeah, it, it's nice. You know, you get like the nice... Obviously, the cogn cognac is coming through. Obviously, the lemon is coming through. It's nice and tart. It's not too sweet. Uh, the champagne syrup kind of gives it this nice you know, champagne feel to it. Can you um, sub it with Prosecco? And yes, it's the same yeah, sugar sure. ratio? I think so, yeah. I mean, I'm going to say that Prosecco is probably going to be a bit... I mean, it just depends because, you know, I think Prosecco is a bit sweeter than, uh, than Champagne, which is going to be on the drier side. That being said, there are some dry Proseccos. Uh, when you add sugar to it and then you add it into a cocktail, are you really going to be, you know, are you really going to be... Right. Messing with the nuances of the sweetness of the Champagne versus the Prosecco versus Cava. If you have kava on hand, I think like any type of spark, sparkling wine, anything that you have that's sparkling champagne style, you can make into the syrup. Well, I think it's going to go fantastically in this cocktail. It's going to give it that nice little bit of dryness. Obviously, I use the dry curacao. And to tell you the truth, the original cocktail calls for triple sec. So I adapted the ingredients a little bit, um, but still uh, pretty fantastic. So there it is, the Sidecar 75. Let's get into the last cocktail of the year. I think you guys are gonna like it. So for the last cocktail of the year, I wanted to do something for brunch the next day. Why do everything for New Year's Eve and not one for New Year's Day? Uh, I hope you guys don't turn your nose up at this because it is a fantastic cocktail. Let's get into making it. It's really, really simple. So first thing we are gonna do is just half an ounce of Aperol. To the bottom of a glass. Champagne flute if you like. I mean, it is the champagne of beers. And then we're gonna do about three ounces give or take up to you. I'm doing three ounces of fresh orange juice. And then we're just gonna top that up with a little Miller High Life. Uh, and there you have it, the Bromosa. Let's give it a little sippy. Oh, that is fantastic. I, oh man. Oh, that's so good. It is a combination that you don't think will go together, which is my favorite thing. Just something that plays against expectations. I created this with the last general manager of Cole's Friendship before COVID. His name is Brian Tetaragas. And we wanted to create something uh, for the brunch menu that was surprising and played against expectations, a little bit tongue in cheek. And not only that, Miller had made these 32 ounce champagne bottles for the champagne of beer. It was a limited edition thing. And we thought it would be really funny to do like a mimosa style thing where we packed the champagne 
uh, Miller High Life bottle into ice in an ice bucket and served it to people tableside. So that's exactly what we did. Uh, that was the genesis of this drink. Um, it is a fantastic brunch drink. I think that you guys should all go out and make this. It's real simple. So there you have it, the Bromosa. So there you have it, guys. Three cocktails to help you bring in your 2021 correctly. And by correctly, I mean fire. If you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon and YouTube memberships. And I will see you guys on another time.